Yeah. It's okay. You can break everything. Okay, I will. Are you trying to move it? No, no, no. I just leaned up against it, and it. <laughs> this should be a chair rather than a table. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Is that how that works? <laughs> we all framed up. Uh, in there. Nice. Well, thank you, Diego, for that lovely introduction. It's great to be here in Culver City today. Um, my name is Franco, and this is my wife, Lisa. And we wrote a book called Whose Mind Is It Anyway? Get Out of Your Head and Into Your Life. Um, we uh, we just actually had our fourth year anniversary a couple of days ago. <laughs> so we, uh, when we met, um, the first thing we did is take a little bit of a ride around New Zealand in Lisa's. Uh, uh, she had this van that was decked out with a mattress and some cooking stuff in the back and also these two little dogs. So it was a little tight, but it was great. And while we were doing that, uh, Lisa was writing a... Uh, sort of a something that she would give away on her blog uh, that turned into a book called Seven Secrets Your Mind Doesn't Want You to Know. Anyway, I was looking over her shoulder and it appeared that we had these really similar understandings from experiences we had had in earlier life that had a huge positive impact. And so that's how we came to write Whose Mind Did It Anyway. Um, and uh, it's a quirky, illustrated book that... Uh, we hope you like. At least it's going to read a little bit from the introduction. Yeah. Hi. Mm-hmm. Hi. Mm-hmm. Hi. Maybe you're reading this book because you like books about the mind, or because you like to read 100 books a year and you heard this was a short one. <laughs> Maybe your life is going really well and you're at a friend's place and you found this in their reading room. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe you're having one of those OMG stomach lurching, are you kidding me moments, and you haven't left the house in days, and you're out of clean undies and food. (laughs) Or maybe you're so in the poo, you're looking back at one of those OMG moments like they were the good old days. Either way, there's something you should know. Feeling unhappy and out of sorts is a sure sign you've been hoodwinked by your mind. It's also the perfect time for learning stuff that will make your life better than ever. Because there are things our mind is good at and things it's not. And knowing which is which can make life a whole lot easier. A few words about this book. There's no homework. (laughs) This book shows you how to see you're already okay by looking at things in a different way. So you don't really have to do anything. And we didn't make this stuff up. For thousands of years, people have written about how this whole being human thing works. Often with less pictures and jokes and usually a lot more words. (laughs) This book boils down universal truths into usable, easy to grasp nuggets. It reveals seven common but unhelpful beliefs that keep us from feeling okay. So without further ado, here are seven ways your mind tricks you out of feeling peaceful and what you can do about it. This is from chapter four, the chapter on learning. Your mind thinks, I love, 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 love learning. When really, Your mind absolutely, completely does not want to learn. And our character says, you're kidding, right? We say, nope, that's why we wrote it so big. (laughs) (laughs) Learning involves change, and change is unpredictable, which can be terrifying for the mind. Your mind will do everything to convince you not to change. It will tell you things like, I'm too old to change. I'm too young to change. I've always been this way. People will laugh at me. Things aren't that bad. It's okay, really. Your mind would rather be uncomfortable in a situation, in a familiar situation, than risk something new. Get the picture? Your mind wants predictability. Your mind hates surprises. Your mind hates to learn. The need for predictability is why people repeat old habits over and over again, even though they might be painful. The need for predictability is why people repeat old habits over and over again. (laughs) When you try something new, don't be surprised if your mind is reluctant, expect it to be. But what about all the studying I've done, all the books I've read? Studying and remembering facts 
isn't the kind of learning where you take on a new belief, which is exactly the type of learning required for actual change. Your mind loves new information, but it's only interested in the kind that supports its existing set of beliefs. I love what I already know. I love what I already know. I love what I already know. As we grow, we form beliefs about what we can do and what we can't do, based on what teachers tell us, on what our family says, and on how we think we compare to others. We wind up thinking, I'm just not creative. I'm such a slow learner, there's no point. I'm too uncoordinated for tennis. I'm not good at relationships. I'm tone deaf, I absolutely can't sing. These ideas become so much a part of us, we think they are the truth, but they're not. We're belief blind. It's like being colorblind, but for beliefs. So this is from a uh, fifth chapter on pain. So we think pain is what happens when people say unkind things, we experience a loss, or we trail toilet paper from our heel on a first date. <laughs> but the truth is, a lot of our pain comes from negative or faulty beliefs about how we're not good enough. And many of our beliefs are garden variety, everyone believes them kinds of beliefs, making them hard to spot. Our mind loves to collect and hold on to critical thoughts. We compare ourselves to others, we pick up messages at school, work, home, and from the media about how we should behave, how we should look, how we should be doing better, and we remember times when we were reprimanded or made fun of, and we carry them with us. These critical thoughts turn into faulty beliefs, and these faulty beliefs sit on top of our mind like band-aids. They cover our well-being and make it hard to feel good. I need a better job before I get a girlfriend. I'm not worthy of love. I'm nothing if I don't go to college. I'm selfish because I drank all the juice when I was eight years old and nobody else wanted it. <laughs> the idea that we're not good enough pushes us around in small ways every day. It's like this. If someone makes fun of your ears and you like your ears, you're not going to feel too bad. But if you're insecure about your ears, you might feel upset. You might even start wearing big ear covering hats. It's not the thing that makes us feel bad, but our thoughts about the thing. <clears throat> and this is the final chapter on acceptance. Your mind thinks, how am I ever going to get all this together? When really, you don't have to. Really? Because I was just starting to see what I was doing wrong. Well, you're not doing anything wrong. It's easy to think, oh wow, I need to do everything the book says. Or, I want to be calm all the time like other people are. Uh, yeah. We thought that was funny too, so we put a whole thing on. <laughs> That's how funny it is thinking other people are calm all the time. The real trick to feeling okay, even when times are tough, is acceptance. It's all about digging yourself. But I worry a lot, and I'm negative and bossy. It's confusing. If I accept myself, it means it's okay being bossy. It would be much easier to dig me when I'm not bossy anymore. Well, that's your mind talking. And getting all fixated on how you'll be in the future, which never comes. Take negativity. You might be full of negative thoughts. So what? You're not doing anything wrong. Negative thoughts are natural. And anyway, you probably won't always have so many. You just do right now. Or confusion. That's not a big deal either. Confusion is a part of learning. The discombobulation you feel as you consider a genuinely new idea is a normal first step toward change. Confused a lot? It could be you're learning a lot. Relax. Give it time. And worrying and being judgmental is what the mind does. All those things you regret, we all have them. They're a normal part of life. Accepting where you are, however you are, is simply the most loving and compassionate thing you can do. The trick to acceptance is to keep layering it on. It's easy to stop too soon. Notice your, incl in your inclination to be bossy or rigid or whatever and accept that. Notice how you are hard on yourself and accept that too. And you forget to be, if you forget to be accepting, yep, accept that too. <laughs> it's all okay. Keep going. Acceptance is a pile of blankets. 
grab as many as you need. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about being buried alive in blankets. Another name for acceptance is love. But um, you don't mean it's okay to lay about the house crying all the time, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, if the house is in shambles, you haven't left the couch in days, and you can't talk without crying, who's to say that's not the perfect reaction? Living and growing and healing isn't some shiny thing. Sometimes it's messy. We have an idea that we need to become a better version of ourselves. But this is just another mind trick. You are already the best and only version of you. You just have trouble seeing it. You may do incredible things. You may do non-incredible things. But these are not who you are. Underneath all your thoughts, underneath all your emotions, underneath all the things you do, you're already whole and complete. Right now, sitting here, hearing this, you are already everything. It might not seem like it sometimes, but you are. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, thank, thank you. you.